right, welcome back to another video in our Basics of Adamo series. Now, in the previous video, we covered databases. We looked at how you can set up your database collections or tables as we better know them. We looked at how you could set up repeating data lists. We also looked at how you could use variables via Adamo's magic text functionality. Now, in this video, we're going to be taking that a little bit further, this time by looking at workflows. If you remember, workflows are one of the fundamental pillars of building uh, no-code apps, and it's what powers the logic and the general back-end, you know, hidden away from the user thinking that your app is going to do. And um, as a bit of a demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how you can use uh, workflows in Adalo to uh, update data, for example. So we'll look at how we could mark a task as complete. We'll look at how we can create a new task to add to our list. Uh, we'll also look at various different bits and pieces of logic, like if statements and that kind of thing. Now, the first thing to know is that Adalo doesn't actually call them workflows. Adalo calls them actions. And we saw this before in the previous video because actually I used an action to link this page to this details page. Now, essentially what happens in Adalo is every single component, no matter what it is, can have an action added to it, which means when the user touches that action, um, then you know something will happen. You can also have various other things like when a screen is loaded, then an action can take place. But essentially every action, you come into the component on the left-hand bar here, you scroll down to where it says add action, or in this case, add another action. You click that and you get this little menu. Now you might be immediately thinking, well, that's a little bit simplistic because most no-code tools are going to have, you know, a canvas with lots of different logical steps that you can drag and drop and add together. But actually, it's pretty intuitive once you get to know it. And, and there's a lot of complexity hidden under the hood. So, for example, um, you know, I can add multiple actions. I can string together as many as I like. And uh, Adalo also has if statements hidden in here, which I'll show you in just a second. But first, let's look at the broad building blocks we've got. So when I click this menu, these are the default actions I'm usually going to get. Depending on what screen I'm on, what component I'm clicking, and what kind of data has been passed around, I might be able to have more or less options um, on different areas, but these are the basics. So I can link things. We know that from the previous video. I also have my create, read, update, delete, or CRUD methodology here. Now, clearly read is missing. Um, if you remember from uh, the the, uh, the CRUD methodology uh, lesson that we did on our fundamentals pillar, you know, the, the, the ability to create, read, update, and delete essentially um, powers the majority of the, the modern internet today. Um, now, I don't have the ability to read here, as I say, that is because actually it's over here. When I do magic variables, that is me reading the data. But the core of what I'm going to want to do in actions is probably going to involve, you know, creating a new database record, updating an existing one or deleting one. And Adalo is clever enough, by the way, if you notice here where it says current task, Adalo is clever enough to know that because I'm working with a repeating data list, I might want to, if I'm going to do update, I might want to update the selected to-do list or the selected task, depending on what option the users hit in here. Um, I also have, for example, notifications, so I can trigger a notification, which makes sense because this is a mobile app, um, or I can request permission to use notifications, and if you're not familiar with that, have you ever logged into an app and within the first 10 seconds you get bombarded with little pop-ups that say, you know, do you want to allow notifications, badges, all this kind of thing? Well, the bad news is, in order for you to send notifications to your users, you need to request their permission at the right time as well. So we've got custom actions. Um, now that's what allows you to do API calls and integrations. So I'm going to touch on them on the next lesson instead. But we've also got a few other bits and pieces. You know, you can force the user to log out, log in, open the share menu, etc. So there's quite a lot there. And if I pop in here, there's also a little bit of complexity hidden under the hood here. So quite often when you create an action, you're going to have this option that says show advanced. And when I click that, it's going to say, so well, when does this option, when does this action happen? So at the minute, on my repeating data list, when uh, a user comes in and they click something, then it's going to transition them or link them to the next screen. And when well, when does that happen? It happens every time, so it's always. However, I could set this to sometimes. I could set some conditions that mean this action only takes place if the following condition is met. So, I, I mean, it really could be anything. I could say, okay, is the due date uh, equal to... Uh, let's say today, and when I go to, I can, you know, I can access data from the current task here, I can also go to more, uh, and there's usually some generic stuff available, like I can usually access uh, lots of information around about dates, so I can hit the current time, so I could say, you know, is the task due today? Well, if so, but I wouldn't let the action happen, if not, no thank you, and you really can make it, I mean, literally anything, you could go into, you could 
count your <laughs> you can count the total number of tasks and you can say well is that greater or equal to five for example if so you know that action will happen if not it won't so this is how you can use if statements and actually it goes a little bit further than that because if i just clear that away actually what you can also do for every single component is set an if statement as to whether or not that component should even be shown so if i go in here I've got change visibility and that does, as I say, show up in every component. You know, if I went here, I've got it there, for example, where I can go, right, set the visibility. So this component could always be visible or I could set it to be sometimes visible. So it'll be visible when, I don't know, the current task due date, as we say, is, um, is before, you know, and then I could put in whatever I like there before the current time. So you can mess around there. Um, and what that's really good for is if you've got, uh, you know, if a screen should look different depending on a certain condition, like has a user done something or the time of day or something like that, then you can you can kind of set certain elements to show or certain components to hide um, based on that. So, you know, this is where I think you start to kind of see that Adalo's, Adalo's thinking of putting the logic within each component gives you a lot of flexibility because rather than having to rely on these big workflows that sit elsewhere, it's all integrated into components. They can all do their own thing and it actually just seems to work surprisingly well. So let's go ahead and see how well it works by actually doing it. Now, in the first video, uh, we had this nice little button. I'm gonna use it again, because what I want to show you first is how you can create data in a database. So if I drag that down there, and hit Add Action. Uh, it's not in the nicest place, but it'll do. Now, it would make sense. I want to create a new task, right? So um, surely I'm gonna hit Task, <coughs> excuse me. And I immediately get this option here. Uh, it's going to show me every field from that database record. So if you remember there for our task uh, database table, we've got task due date as task complete to-do list, etc. And immediately if I go back to that, uh, oops, that action, those are the same options that I've got there. And I can do various different things. I can type in manually. Um, I can add, uh, you know, variables. I can hit new formula and add some sort of kind of mathematical function. If you're that way inclined, there's lots of stuff you can do there. But I'm not going to do that because the problem here is this data is all for me as the app builder to put in. If I want to uh, get the user to create a task, then I, I need to go and find out what task does he want, when's I want to do it by, etc. So instead of creating um, data there and then, I'm actually going to link to a new screen. I'm going to call this screen create new, whoops, create new task. And instead of selecting a usual app bar template, this time I'm going to select a form and watch this. So immediately... I've got a new uh, action for that action button. It is linking me to this screen, and this screen has created a uh, form. Now, the form is fairly generic at the minute. If I zoom in a little bit, we've got well, the usual you know, text inputs in a box. But if I look back on the configuration menu, which data collection, well, I can select a table for this form to specify. So I can hit tasks. And the first thing that happens is the task pops up, the due date pops up, you know, all these fields from the database start to show and I can select what I want it to do. In this case, the only option I've got is create a new task, but you do get others depending on what you're doing. And so I can start to configure this. Now, if I, I let me close fields for a second. Let's look at submit button to see what's going on. So I can obviously change that. I could put a wee exclamation, oh Christ. I could put a wee exclamation mark there, for example, if I wanted. But already it's created the click actions for me. You know, we've got the link, we've got the create, etc. And that's what happens, by the way, is it creates it and then it immediately links me back a page. But let's go and configure it for ourselves. Now, I can click on each form. So, you know, there you go. The task field, I could put, you know, I could change that to enter task. And I could put, well, uh, what do you want to do, for example? You can put whatever you like here. Um, but the important bit is you can kind of configure it to your liking. Now, this is showing the visible fields that the user can complete. So let's think about that for a second. Well, it makes sense to ask them their task. It makes sense to ask them the due date. It doesn't really make sense, though, to ask them if the task is already complete. Now, we need that field in our database because we need to be able to track if a task has been done or not. But it doesn't make much sense for the user to tell us it's been done at the same time that he's actually, um, you know, setting it up. So, now, you could probably argue a million reasons that that is a valid uh, argument, but in this case, what we want to do is hide that option from the user. We want them to be able to tell us a task and when it's due, but we'll decide um, just to automatically set the is task complete to false so that, um, you know, the user starting with a fresh task rather than it's immediately disappeared. 
So is the task complete? Well, we can do this thing called set automatic fields, and this just basically means we can set the value as the app builders without the user ever seeing it. So I'm going to say is task complete to false, and that means when he creates this task or when she creates this task, the task will be um, immediately set to uncomplete because you would imagine the user is going to complete uh, create the task, then go complete it, then come back and mark it. So that's brilliant. Now the other thing we need to do is sort out what to do list this task is on. And this is where a lot of people get caught up with Adalo. So if you remember in our previous video when we set the database up, we said we've got a bunch of tasks. Each of those tasks relates to a specific to-do list. And then each to-do list has one owner. And the reason we did that is because we wanted an, a, a user to be able to set up multiple uh, task lists or to-do lists. For example, they might have a shopping list, they might have a personal list, a work list, etc. But we also, uh, we wanted to make sure they could have as many as they like, but we wanted to make sure then that the task could fit within that kind of specific list. So that's brilliant. So we, can, we say, okay, well, now we need to go and specify that uh, the task should go on a to-do list. So I click here, I go to configure that, and immediately I run into a problem. Because I'm kind of thinking, well, I probably want to get the logged in user's current task list. So I go there, and I go there, and it just keeps going on forever. And it'll literally just go off the screen and go on in this infinite loop. If I go to owners, it gives me tasks. If I go to do, you know, so on and so forth, it's, an, it's unending and I can't select anything. If I try and click here, nothing works. But let's think about why that is. Number one, the logged in user can have multiple uh, to-do lists. And so therefore, at this current moment, we can't tell it which exact to-do list from the current users to use because we don't know because they might have one as I've currently got on our database. But equally, if this is a real app, the user could have a million different to-do lists. They could have, you know, 50, they could have 10, whatever it might be. And so quite often what happens in, a, in an Adalo is, a, or Adalo even, I keep pronouncing it wrong, well, it's just me. Um, quite often what happens is, is you just get stuck in these infinite loops of relationships. And so you've got a, a few things uh, to try and fix this. Now, if you remember, when we uh, set up a repeating data list in the previous task and we linked it to the next screen, because we set up the link to come from the repeating data task, the only way somebody could get to that detail screen is to select a specific task. And so this immediately uh, brought all the data across with it. You know, we immediately had that current task data available. However, here, is just a home screen. We haven't, and when we click this button, it's just sitting in a home screen. We haven't actually told it that it should use any specific to-do list task. And so when we come to this screen and we look at the available data, well, there's none. And so even though we, we know we're just trying to add it to the one list, we have the app has no way to know that. It doesn't know which way, which list the user's trying to add it to. So you've got three options. Either number one, you have another screen here where the user can pick a specific list and then they can see the list or add it to the list. That's one solution. Number two is you could change your database so that a user can only ever have one list and therefore, well, it's a pretty easy selection. You don't have to worry about it. In fact, if you were doing that, you wouldn't even need to do the list table in the first place. You would just need tasks and uh, users. Or the other really simple thing you could do is hit add visible field to do list and let the user pick whatever field or whatever list they want. So if we do that, we should now be able to preview this and actually make it work. We should be able to add things to our database. Now at the minute I've got this big list here and there's a few things I've added in there just when I was playing around with it. But if I hit the add button and I enter my task, uh, what's my new task going to be? Um, a create an add app and we're going to say that is due April the 29th 2021 and we're going to select our to-do list now we've only got one available that could say shopping list or you know work list etc but I'll just put list one because that's what we've got we'll hit create task and immediately what should happen is it shows up on our list so that shows up I can click in I can get the details it says it's during a Thursday presumably if you look up April 29th it'll be a Thursday and that in a nutshell, is how you add data. Adalo has done so much for us there. It's taken all that, it's created it, made it display, it's put it in the database. You know, a lot of that legwork is done for you. And let me show you how simple the next step is. So let's say, okay, we've created the task. Now we want to be able to mark them as complete. Well, and just come in here into my repeating data list. And let's say I want them to be able to, to tick the little checkbox there. Now we know that's on our right section. If you remember from the last video, you know, Adalo components are made up of multiple components. So the right section is this little bit here. You've got the left section, which is a circle, and you could 
change that to an image or an icon, whatever, but we're not going to mess with that. We're just going to look at the right section. Well, we want to be able to add an action there. And if you think about it, all we really need to do here is update the um, the current task so that we now mark it as complete. So we'll go there, current task. And the current task, as a reminder, is whichever one the user is currently clicking on on this list. So it could be any one of them. Now, again, I get all these fields popping up, just you know, completely corresponding to the database record. Now, I don't want to change the task name, I don't want to change the due date, and I don't really want to change the list it's on, but I do want to change whether or not it's complete. I'm going to mark that as true. So is the task complete? True. So what we're saying is, when a user uh, hits the right section, which is where this little icon is, then the task will update to be marked as complete to be true. So let's see what happens. Well, we go in, we preview it. And let's look at the, the one that I just done, which was creating Adalo app. Okay, brilliant, Adalo, keep to say Adalo, not Adalo. Um, now if I click that, it disappears, brilliant. Now the reason it does that is because we've marked it in task, we've marked it as completed with a little tick. And what I've actually done is I've added a second filter here. So look at this. So if I take that filter away, right, and I go in preview, then it's magically going to appear back at the top. And it doesn't matter if I click it, whatever I do, it's just going to keep appearing. It's not going to go anywhere. So what I need to do is I need to add another filter. I've already got it filtered uh, as we set up in the second video. But as I go, I can do, is task complete? I can set that to true. I can set that to false, sorry. And that means this list is only going to show tasks where the is task complete field is set to false. And so if I go back here, then it's gone again. If I hit other pizza, it's gone. If I hit film a video on custom actions, it's all gone. So that's pretty cool. Essentially what we've done there is we've found a way to get rid of uh, lists. Now you could stop there or you could kind of say, well, I added this little tab earlier for completed. Um, so we could show completed tasks and I could set up a link there. So delete that one, add action, we'll do link, link to a new screen. We could do completed tasks. We'll link that. So when I click that, I'll link across. And then what I can do, I'm just going to copy this. So I've copied that list. I'm going to hit paste. And that's just why it's letting me drag a second one there. I'm going to put that slap bang on there. And I'm going to make one change. This list on the left, the one we've set up from the start, it only shows tasks which are not complete because it's set to false. So on my list over here, I'm simply going to set that to true, which is just reversing the effect. And so when I hit preview, and this time I go down to my wee bottom tab bar where I've got the completed list, then I'm immediately going to have every single item that I hit uh, as, as complete. So if I mark this as complete, mark this as complete, mark edit the Adalo video, Adalo video, keep getting that wrong. And there you go, they all show up in the list. So that, in summary, is a very basic explanation of Adalo actions. That is how they work. That's how you can mess around with different components, different actions. You can use your conditional uh, visibility. Uh, you can use your uh, different if statements. You know, when does this happen? And in a nutshell, you know, these simple building blocks are going to let you add up to build really complex logic, really complex apps. But there is one way you can take it a little bit further and jump in the next video and I'll show you how that works.